Hey everybody, it's Sharon from Vivi Days. I am super excited to be sharing my second collaboration with the most amazingly funny, gifted, creative, talented, genuinely nice person. That is Claire's Crafty Corner. If you have not seen her channel, please go over there and show her some love and some support. Remember to like her video, subscribe if you're not already, and say hi from myself. The same with mine. I'm sharing you a process. Now, this is a very long process, and I think there's eight hours com combined down into 30 minutes for you, but I hope that you add value. Uh, I hope that it adds value. I hope you enjoy it. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm going to keep this short and sweet because it is a long video. But remember, thumbs up, subscribe, share. Comments are always welcome. If you want to purchase this one, um, let me know. It will eventually go on my Etsy store. But because of the materials it's made in, not giving too much away just yet, it takes a long time for it to be transportable to you. But I digress. I'm Sharon. So the scope of our project was kitchen. So we had to use a sponge or a flannel, a spatula or a spoon, um, some kind of kitchen utensils, and blues, uh, silver, <laughs> uh, and then just use your imagination. Now, I did use all the stuff, but some of them very lightly, so I apologise, Claire, but I'll let you know if you think I've nailed it or failed it. But much love wherever you are in the world. I hope you're safe. I hope you enjoy this video. It's the first one of this type I've done since I've been in uh, since I lived in Australia. So we're talking over four years ago, and this is the kind of art that I really love and I connect with. So I just want to say to all you powerful women out there, this is for you. You've got this. Hey, I'm going to do my best to talk out loud. All the materials that I'm going to use throughout this project are listed at the front screen, but they will be in my description. Remember to check that out. This theme was set by the most amazing Claire. Please make sure you do go over and visit her channel. She set the theme of using three kitchen utensils. Basically, you can do whatever you want within uh, your materials, color schemes, mediums that you're using but you've got to select either a, a sponge or a flannel not a flannel a sponge or a cloth a wooden spoon and a spatula and then like a kitchen um piece of cutlery so i went for sponge spatula and uh, a spoon watch this space i knew that we were going to be working with blues and silver because the pieces that we're working on had to incorporate them and at this stage I really didn't know what I was doing I knew that obviously we've set the challenge of blues and I'm starting to add my oils to the canvas and having so much fun with a sponge but hashtag disclaimer sponges do absorb a lot of the oils in there and you probably use more than you would do with a paintbrush but it was fun and you may ask why uh, what am I doing with the paint at the minute well I'm working with a feeling I didn't know what I was creating at this stage all I know is uh, from an artist's point of view if you have darker uh, to the outside and it goes lighter on the inside your eye gets drawn to the middle of the painting so I'm going with the feeling and working through it. You'll start to see that I start to look at the screen behind me while I'm recording. If you don't do this, I'd recommend stop, step away, look at your image from different perspectives, take a photo or look at your screen like I'm doing because you get to see it differently because when you're in it, you spot the faults or you spot, you, you, you just lose perspective and I would recommend you doing that. Now I'm going backwards and forwards and I think at this stage, this is where I felt like I wanted to come and do a wave. Now I'm going to work on something that I've not worked on since 2016 and it's something that I used to do in my collection but I'm not going to give a spoiler alert just yet. You can wait <laughs> but if you are interested in seeing any of these types of painting of what I used to do um, they're in my back catalogue on Facebook but I am going to revisit a collection of this because I absolutely love it. And again, I think, Claire, this is where I sent you a photo when I got really dirty and my sponge was dirty to show you that I'd started it. And I was just, I was just having a blast, letting my freedom, not letting my freedom, what am I saying? Just going for it, being creative, having fun and painting like I'm a kid. And at this stage, I'm starting to sculpt a wave. Um, what you will see shortly is uh, once I get my wave and I'm happy with it, I come in and you're going to see me adding a little bit of glitter very subtly. I don't normally add glitter to my oils but this one I wanted it to be quite magical so I've gone with a very delicate blending of glitter and hashtag disclaimer Claire I think part of my silver is my silver glitter that I will add but there is another surprise appearance of something else that represents silver as well. 
Um, I'm adding my hands at this stage just to try and control the blending and the finer details but trying to straight stay true to that using that sponge uh, and trying to just give almost a 3D effect to this abstract wave that I'm creating. Anyway, I'm going to shut up for a little bit and let you watch my process. The glitter that I add always matches the tones of the paint colour behind them so make sure you do that but use it sparingly. Now this paint, this pencil paint, <laughs> this pencil drawing you're going to get to see is one that was created by myself when I was doing a study of some models. We had half an hour to paint people that was in front of us and I love that so I like to reuse and reuse things that I connect with so I traced around her profile and thought you know what she would be great as my goddess coming out of this wave and um, was just playing around with where does it fit and uh, popped it on the paint don't stress because I knew I could go over it and it's quite wet and then I thought why have I put a face there it's the outline that I want but I did keep her to one side to reference so never be afraid to reference any work that you've done before or anything that you've seen and um, when I went around this with the outline here in the white now you could have waited until it was fully dried but I didn't want to get any harsh lines in her face so I wanted to smooth out certain areas and I started to get lost into this and I could have stopped with it just being a delicate white outline and it would have looked like she's looking off into the moonlight um, but I didn't want to do that I wanted to bring in a full face and challenge myself because I think you can lose the skills if you're not using them often enough and like I said it's been over four years since I've painted a face I've done pencil drawings of Neil and if you're interested let me know and I can show you uh, but I wanted to sculpt one with my paint and because I didn't know where the wave was falling, I'm just blending in all those colours together, getting rid of any harsh lines. And that's what I'm doing with the hair as well, where I know that I'm going to be working on the face area. I started blended back those colours and those lines, and I'm just trying to darken that area here. So that as I know that it's going to be maybe two weeks I'm working on this. So I just know from, you know, previous experience that when you if you don't get your lines out they could dry and then nobody wants to not you know a line in the face and I'm sure I'm just digressing but even at this part here I could have just left that it looks like um, you know somebody just looking off I keep saying you know that is really bad you know <laughs> uh, but I'm just taking my time sculpting in the area as I've said before just removing everything keep looking behind me just to see if I'm liking it and as I'm at this point I'm just trying to work out okay what is it that I'm going to do and I probably could have psyched myself out here and just said just leave it as it is there it's simple it's elegant it's striking I thought no you're taking the easy route Sharon you know that you want it to be this strong beautiful goddess uh, looking out and you want to add your warrior signs that you do under her eyes the my warrior signs anyway Anyway, I'm going to show up for a little bit and you're just going to see me start to sculpt her face. The challenge with oils sometimes is working wet on wet but that's also the beautiful aspect of it so I am adding a dark blue the ultramarine blue and trying to map out the features where a fade is going to be and get the proportion and you'll see I keep referencing um, the traced image just to the left of me and again never be afraid to do that or ashamed to do that you see me doing the left and the right thing with my brush that's me just checking that my angles are right and everything because with a face all you need is one thing at the wrong angle and it suddenly looks so different and it's often the lips I was trying normally I would do a, 
a really contrasting color on the lips so originally I was going to go for an orange orange and blue go really nice together I've also done red lips on one of my blue people before um, and I didn't like it but the good thing is the orange added a nice base so the white oil underneath didn't dilute that color and I just decided to leave it with the ultramarine blue to start with because um, I knew that I could go over that as I start to sculpt it but it helps me understand where they are and um, I kept trying to get it more or less like the pencil drawing I've done and I really should have just forgotten about it once I'd got sort of the eyes eyebrows nose everything where they are give her own personality which she does she evolves uh, but again it's a learning process and when you've applied white oil it's very hard for you to get your darker colors to come through because with oils it's best to work dark to light not like acrylics light to dark but it all worked out in the end you'll see me doing a lot of backwards and forwards in if you've got any questions about how I sculpt her face or anything like that let me know but I think you just always have to be aware of slowly build it up start to work on tones you know that you're going to do about three or four different levels and keep coming back you've got plenty of time to re-sculpt anything you're unhappy with and you're basically just making it come alive slowly uh, and you'll see I don't get it right I have to keep going back and tweaking it uh, tweaking it until I'm happy or tweaking it until the perspective looks right but I'm gonna let you enjoy some music now um, I think you've heard enough of me digressing hopefully some of this is self-explanatory but questions along the way and please remember to go visit Claire's Crafty Corner I cannot wait to see what you've created Claire
it is review time and I am in love with this. It's so tranquil, magical, mystical, whatever word you want to throw at it, I love it. To start with uh, the sponge and coming in and just blending those colours to then taking it to uh, one of my strong female women uh, with the silhouette, which I've not done in four years, and to start sculpting that face and bring her alive and capture her within this massive wave. She is my goddess of the ocean. I'd love for you to come up with a name for her, but thank you, Claire, for this amazing collaboration. I hope that you could see the use of the sponge, the fork, the spoon and the spatula. And my tiny little bit of silver, which I've had to be a bit creative with my diamonds and my um, silver glitter. And I'm going to take you in for a close up. I hope you can see the beauty that I can. It's always very hard in camera. And there is just the right amount of glitter that features all the way through this piece, which adds to that mystical. And the glitter that I've used are the tones of the oils underneath and when you're looking at it straight on you can't see it but then different lights or as you're moving it just glistens so i'm going to take you in so you can see sort of the quality i don't think i'm going to get the glistening for you i'll try i've got a torch nearby but i'm not too sure if i'm going to capture it but there is glitter around most of this air uh, piece oh you saw a little bit there it's very hard because it, it's very subtle only a little bit's been added, but as you're going around, you can see it. But I love the tones and the colours that's coming through here. And I love how the wave is crashing and her face is coming out of it, her head. And uh, the froth of the wave has been like her crown in her hair and her beautiful, they're lovely. They're called like dim diamond table um, scatterings. And they are just a beautiful cut and uh, they glisten beautifully. I don't know if I'm capturing it on there. And there's a little bit of glitter in her hair there, which is a white, which, oh, I can't capture it on the video, no. Anyway, Claire, I hope that you're happy with this. I hope that we feel that we've hit the mark with the requirements of the collaboration. If it is a piece that you're interested in purchasing, Please make me aware because this won't be on my Etsy store for a few months. It's going to have to dry. Um, and if you'd like a like a step by step of tutorial on this kind of thing, let me know. Uh, but it was a fun project. I love it. So remember, thumbs up, subscribe, share, comments are always welcome. Remember to go over and visit Claire. Uh, say hello to her from me and have a look at the amazing work. And I hope you enjoyed this live premiere with us. So I'm going to take this outside quickly to see if I can capture the sparkle for you. Much love, see you on the next video and Claire, I can't wait for the next collab.